Hey, this is Andy Graham back with the Hoosier Hall of Famer. And in this case, we're with the great coach, Jerry Yeagley, who built Indiana's soccer program. And in this segment, we're going to talk about the early championship years. And there were many of those. And uh, uh, we'll start actually in the late, in the mid to late 70s, when you were starting to make championship games. You went to three of them, and you kept running into San Francisco, coached by Steve Dejesco who built his club with a lot of foreign players, you seem to want to take a different path, a different avenue, and use homegrown players, U.S. players, and to show that those guys could compete at the highest level. So talk about that, uh, that philosophy. Well, four years from varsity starting, we went to the Final Four. We were the new kid on the block. Nobody expected us to be there, uh, and we were there with primarily Midwest kids, St. Louis, Chicago, Michigan, the Midwest kids. All of them were from the U.S. And we faced Steve and his San Francisco squad, which was basically all internationals mm -hmm. and all older internationals. It was before the age limit was put in by the NCAA. <coughs> Excuse me. So he had older players, foreign players, and we lost three times, 76, 78, 80. We were the bridesmaids. Yeah. And it was a little bit of a monkey on our back. And then finally, getting the win in 82 against Duke down in Lauderdale, that was, that was a tremendous relief. Well, eight overtimes. I mean, it's, uh, I remember <clears throat> Thumper Thompson scored in the 157th minute. I think I, I remember the NCAA officials would consult with, with you and, and John Rennie, the Duke coach, and, and shorten the overtimes because guys were dropping like flies in the humidity by that time. But it was what, what a fantastic game. And I remember uh, after I got a quote from Thumper Thompson lying on his back after he'd been dogpiled by his teammates, John Rennie gave me a quote. I was looking for you. You were on the, on the shoulders of Indiana cheerleaders waving a giant <laughs> IU flag. And when I ran up to you and said, Coach, and you knew I needed a quote. You said, the monkey is gone. The monkey is gone. <laughs> but it's one of the great championship games in NCAA history. It's still, I think, the longest championship game in NCAA history. I don't know if that's true or not. It was the longest until that time. And you're right. We started at 7.30 in Lauderdale, and it's hum humid down there, humid. as you know. And we didn't finish that game till 11.30. <laughs> and there, we did shorten the overtimes. And they were concerned about dehydration. Right. Uh, and we talked, John and I, and the officials said, well, we're going to call the game after this overtime. John and I looked at each other and we said, no way. <laughs> we're not going to call this game. We're going to play this game. Right. And they shortened the overtimes to five minutes rather than ten minutes, and Thumper scored a great goal to win it. But what one of the all-time great <laughs> championship games. What, what, I know you ran John Stolmeyer around the wall, and the guy at the end of the Duke wall took a step thinking that you guys were going to chip to John, and then Greg put that ball right where that guy's head had been, and you saw it bounce into the goal. Do you remember what it felt like? Uh, I do, but Andy, early in the game, we used that play where we ran a player off the wall and, and got it to him and served it in and almost scored. So this time we ran the guy around the wall, their player went with him, and Thumper put it right where their player had been, and it bounced and went in the corner of the goal. Do you remember what it felt like? I was, I was shocked, Andy. I was in shock. I just sort of stood there and was frozen. And all of a sudden, Don Ross and my assistant grabbed me and gave me the big giant hug. And I see everybody piling. But it was uh, surreal. It, was surreal. Yeah. it really was. Well, you guys won it again in 83. You almost won three in a row. I mean, I was at the Kingdom when they shampooed the carpet and nobody could stand up in the game against Clemson. Oh. But that was a great team uh, with, with Paul DiBernardo and, and the rest of those guys, you know, that could have won three straight. Should have won three straight. Right. And if it hadn't been for the fact that the night before we played the championship game, we practiced on the king, in the Kingdom on their turf, and it was great. Yeah. We had flats. We didn't bring our outdoor wet weather shoes because it was, it was a dome. So sure enough, they take off the lines of football with an oil-based solvent, and it, we were like on ice skates. But the other team, Clemson, did bring outdoor shoes for <laughs> wet weather, and they wore them, and they had the octopus-type 
surface, and they weren't sliding anywhere. And that had a big fact. That team should have won three in a row. Should have had a three-peat. One of my biggest disappointments. Well, a, a happier result was against Howard getting to host an NCAA title game in 88. The one image I remember from that game is Howard had a guy who did a front flip throw in. He would like do a front flip and it was like almost like a corner kick from midfield. It would come rocketing into the goal mouth. But you know, being able to beat Howard and being able to do it on your home field at Bill Armstrong Stadium, what was that like? Well, it was one of the most exciting and honoring and just great feeling winning at home in front of your crowd, playing at home. There were only two years where they had the Final Four at the side of one of the Final Fours, and we were fortunate to be part of that. And Clemson, or uh, I'm sorry, Howard had all international players. Mm -hmm. Chaka Hislop, their great goalie, uh, played internationally for years, and they killed South Carolina. So we weren't expected to win in the final, and very honestly, Andy, that team in 88 was not one of the top teams. I had teams that lost championships, but it was an overachieving group that had a Kenny Snow who scored all kinds of goals and defended like heck. And we stopped Peter Isaac, the great, everybody's all American. We stopped him, we sp stopped their attack and won 1-0 at home. And you know, each championship is special in its own way, whether it's the first one, the last one, the one at home, that was special because it was at home. Well, you had another team that won back-to-back -back titles, uh, as I recall, uh, built around three kids who started in the Ukraine, Dima Kovalenko, uh, Alexei Karol, and Yuri Lavrinenko. You got them. Um, and uh, who all prepped at Rochester, New York. They came here when they were 14. Right. So, so they really went to high school here. I didn't travel to the Ukraine to get them. They came here as a youth team. Chernobyl exploded and they all stayed here every player on that team they didn't go back home so that's how we got the connection with rochester through some of our alums well that was six national titles uh, total for jerry we've just talked about five of them in our final segment we'll talk about his last title in 2003 which is a pretty special story in its own right